Thank you, Phyllis. Good morning. My name is Leslie, and I'll be your service leader today. Welcome to Unity of Bloomington. At Unity, we offer practical spiritual teachings that empower abundant and meaningful living. We are a center for spiritual growth, and we provide inspiration, tools, and practices that support people on their path to spiritual growth. Please stand with us and combine in singing with joyful song. This beautiful, this beautiful, this beautiful day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for my friend. standing and join me in affirming our statement of being. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe. 
God the good, omnipotent. This power expresses life, love, wisdom, and abundance through me. In it, I live and move and have my being. Please be seated. One way we empower abundant and meaningful living is by practicing the five principles. I will state the principle and invite you to respond with the affirmation. God is all good and active in everything, everywhere. God is. I am naturally good because God's divinity is in me and everyone. I create my experiences by what I think, feel, do, and believe. I create. Through affirmative prayer and meditation, I connect with God and bring out the good in my life. I pray. I do and give my best by living the truth I know. I make a difference. I now invite Ginger up for our moment with the children. Hello, everyone. Hi, Ella. How are you? I'm good. I'm so glad to hear that. We'll take a nice little seat here. I missed you last Sunday. Um, I dressed up for Sunday. Do you want to know what I was? Yeah. I'm glad you said yes, because I would have been embarrassed if you said no. And I would have told you anyway. <laughs> I was a purple unicorn. I was going to guess a butterfly. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what were you? I was a warrior princess. Ooh, I like that. She was standing in her power. What color was your uh, outfit? Blue. A blue. Do you know what the color of blue uh, in the chakras, blue represents your um, kind of your voice chakra, and the, the color of the voice chakra is blue. So you were standing in your power. Say cool. Cool. There we go. <laughs> You're so fun. So this month, we are talking about uh, the power of release or letting go of things. Uh, do you have a favorite toy? Uh, does the karaoke machine? The karaoke machine does count. I should have said, do you have a favorite possession? Because you are getting to the age where we don't play with toys anymore. We have things that we love. Don't you think things that we love? Okay, Phyllis says she still plays with toys, but... Uh, and Joe and Meredy still play with toys. But so you have, you play, you have fun with your karaoke machine, right? Yeah, but um, I don't really play with my toys anymore. See, that's what I thought. You, you will when you get into your 50s. Don't worry. You'll, they'll come back. The stage will come back, and you'll, you'll remember all your old toys and go, oh, what happened to that? But uh, so you, you have fun with your karaoke machine, correct? Yes. Okay, excellent. So this week, we're talking about <sighs> how to release things that no longer serve us. What does your karaoke play? Does it play a CD or MP3s? A CD. A CD. Okay, so you might, have you ever heard of an album? Yes. Okay, an album. So have you ever heard of an A-track? No. Okay, uh, how about a cassette tape? No. Okay. Uh, I forgot what those are. Cassette tape. Yeah, so here's the thing. There's going to probably come a time uh, in the next 10 years, who knows, in the next 20 years, where maybe we don't use CDs anymore. Uh, because back when I was growing up, we used this thing called an A-track player, and then we had uh, a cassette player. Uh, and now, and then I got a CD player, which I'm using now. And then sometimes I just use my phone, and those use MP3s digital music. Now, albums was the very first one, a record. They have made a comeback. So CDs might make a comeback, I don't know. But So what happened was there came a time when I had gotten rid of all of my album players, all of my cassette players, all of my eight track players, 
and I could only do CDs and MP3s, but I still had all these albums. So you know what I did? Uh, no. Well, I had options. Uh, some, I could have gotten rid of all my albums, released them, let them go, give them away, or I could buy it because they came out with them. A new, uh, a new, uh, a new uh, stereo that plays albums and cassettes again. But so what I'm saying is there might come a time when your karaoke player doesn't play CDs anymore and it might be time to release it. How are you gonna feel about that? I'd probably feel sad. Yeah, because you know, cause it, it brought you so much joy and so, but here's the thing, it doesn't play, nobody makes CDs anymore. And so you, to make room in your life, this is in the future, of course, to make room in your life for that next player that they haven't created yet, you might need to release your karaoke machine and make space for a new kind of player to come into your life uh, so that you can participate in the new karaoke way of doing it. So what, I, so what happens is we're talking this month about releasing what kind of no longer serves us your karaoke machine is still working great, but maybe 10 years from now, we might be hearing our music from something we can't even imagine yet. So we might need to make space to bring that new thing into our life. Because if we hold on to that karaoke machine and then bring in the new stuff, our, lo our room that we listen to music in might get a little too cluttered and we can't dance. And you like to dance with your music, don't you? A lot. A lot. So in order to create space in our life so that we can keep dancing, sometimes it's a good decision to release things that might no longer be serving us. So I'm not saying that you have to release your karaoke machine this week, but maybe in 10 or 20 years. Do you think you'll be okay by then? Yeah. Okay, that we, we will all be okay because one of our affirmations is what we release will bless us. So it's okay to release things because it's gonna come back and bless us. So don't be concerned about releasing things in your life, okay? All right, I'll see you next Sunday, okay? Let's sing I Like to Ella. This year's Unity's annual theme is how to stay centered no matter what. Each month we explore the role that one of the 12 powers plays in staying centered and experiencing inner peace no matter what is occurring around us. This month we're exploring the power of release. In the 12 powers of man, Charles Fillmore says there must be renunciation or letting go of old thoughts before new thoughts can find their place in consciousness. From Divine Audacity, Linda Martello Witsit writes, spiritual release is our power to cleanse, renounce, and repent. Life flows naturally. Always life is streaming. Bodies of water, flow through inlets and outlets. A body of water stopped at either its inlet or outlet stagnates. It stinks, it dies, damning the mind with unforgiveness, self-criticism, or non-constructive beliefs produces stinking thinking. Utilize any of these three aspects of the purgative power of release, and you will not only feel better, you will know more. Surely your infinite self 
and your divine identity. Please join me in saying today's affirmation. Together, whatever I release will bless me. And Ginger has an announcement for us. Thank you, Leslie. I have two announcements because I live in an abundant world. <laughs> the first is just an update on our solar panels. We're so excited that uh, we are stepping into, um, I don't know, thank you. But we're, so, we're stepping into the future by, uh, by getting into the flow of, of solar energy. And we're happy to announce that 24 of our 75 panels have been sponsored by members of our community. So we're just so grateful for not only your just participation in, in voting for the project to go forward, but also your financial support behind the project. And so we're just celebrating the abundance that we as a community are experiencing. So I just wanted to say a big thank you. We're still looking at our timeline and we're just all very excited to see this stepping into the new year 2022 with solar electricity, solar power. So thank you, thank God, woohoo. The second announcement is that, I know it's hard to believe, but Christmas will be here in like 45 days. And so uh, if you are interested in participating in a Christmas choral experience, uh, please let Phyllis know. So uh, just contact her. Uh, her. Her information is on our website, or you can just talk to her today if you're interested. And uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get ourselves gathered together so we can combine our voices in Christmas music. So let's all get prepared uh, for the season. <laughs> Thank you. And Leslie, back to you. Okay. The words for today is divine order. And the affirmation is, I live in harmony with divine order. And from the daily word for today, life is, a const is in constant motion, even if that motion is imperceptible to me. When I feel stuck or impatient with my progress, I consider the gradual but orderly pattern of seasons and change. The single golden leaf I notice one day will become part of a blaze of color in a few weeks later. The brisk chill of morning air will soon lead to the biting cold of snow. The first tender seedlings of spring will bring bright blooms and a verdant canopy followed by long, sultry days of summer. Little by little, one season turns into the next. My growth and understanding may happen in much the same way. Even if I don't notice the changes day by day, my life is always in motion and in order. And from James 2:22. You see that faith was active all along with his works, and faith was brought completion by the works. Let's repeat together the affirmation, I live in harmony with divine order. Together? I live in harmony with divine order. And now repeat this to yourself silently. I live in harmony with divine order. Musical inspiration will be provided by Dan Pikarski. And our speaker today is our spiritual ministry co-coordinator, Ginger Curry. Let's now prepare for meditation. We're going to prepare for meditation by singing in this and every moment. In this and every moment, I am safe and all is well. In this and every moment, I am safe and all is well. 
I'd like to invite you to close your eyes at this time, if that feels comfortable. Take a nice deep breath in. And release. One more cleansing breath in. Hold for a moment. And release. Now, just as you breathe in and out with every exhalation, feel any tension that you might be experiencing. Just release from your body. Any thought, any outcome that you might be holding on to tightly, release it into the flow of spirit, into the activity of God. In this and every moment, I am safe and secure. I am healed, I am whole, and I release and I let go. I let go. Whatever burden, whatever concern I might be holding, I am open and willing to release it. And I open myself up to experience and to express that which I feel led and called and drawn to expressing. I clear out space to make room. So as we rest in the silence, as we breathe in, we're breathing in openness. And as we exhale, we are releasing all that no longer serves us. So let's breathe in and out in the silence.
this is my last song if this is my final day if tomorrow I'll be gone what do I want to say if this is my It's my time to go when my body's moved on. What will I have to show? Oh, but fortune and fame, they scatter to the wind. The things that make a name just don't matter in the end. But is the world a little more peaceful? Oceans and sky a little more blue? Is humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can do? Does the sun shine a little bit brighter where before there was only rain? If so, then I'm glad I came. If these are my last words for all of the earth to hear, if all that I have ever been is about to disappear, if these are my last words, there's nothing that I need to say I have only tried to serve it's never been about talking anyway so much hurt there is to heal it's hard to understand all I can hope to feel is that I am doing what I can. Is the world a little more peaceful? Oceans and sky a little more blue? Is humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can do? Does the sun shine a little bit brighter where before there was only rain? If so, then I'm glad I came. Have I given hope to the hopeless? Has a hungry soul been fed? Has a child stood a little bit taller? Cause the something that I said, have I left a little kindness? Have I eased a little pain? If so, then I'm glad I came. For that, I'm so glad I came. If this is my last song, what do I leave behind? What do I pass on? If I am out of time.
Wow. Thank you so much, Dan. Betsy, I forgot this clicker. Oh, thank you for singing that Daniel Namad song, last song. You and I are only guaranteed that one day we will leave this earthly plane. Um, we are here for just a while. So let's make sure that we use our time wisely and that we take advantage of the healing opportunities that are in front of us, that we take advantage of the beauty that is around us and that the opportunity. Uh, one of my uh, teachers, actually uh, Reverend Paul Hesselbach, who is the one that kind of wrote our textbook on metaphysics, uh, Reverend Paul Hesselbeck, uh, he always started his classes was with the phrase, today it is a beautiful day in my consciousness. No matter what it looks outside, we're blessed today because it actually is a beautiful day outside. But if it was raining outside or if, it was, uh, if we were covered in snow, you and I have, and this is one of the uh, Youth and Family Ministries affirmations, we have the choice to proclaim that it is a beautiful day in our consciousness. And... If we're not there yet, if, if you know, we, sometimes we have to work up to just saying, it's a beautiful day in my consciousness. Sometimes we can say, I am willing and open to experiencing a beautiful day in my consciousness. Or I am, I am willing and I am open to uh, the possibility of experiencing a beautiful day in my consciousness. And then we can work our way through those affirmations where we can just proclaim it's a beautiful day in my consciousness. So if you've been following along at home, you will know that we have been studying and exploring how you and I can tap into this power of peace uh, no matter what is happening around us in this physical world. Because we know that there is a lot of whatever happening around us. Us, I, I, uh, I can, I can find my peace, no matter what is happening around me. So uh, we've been exploring how the twelve powers work into this, and so today is November, so we're up to our eleventh power, and so we had faith, strength, love, understanding, will, order, imagination. Wait. Faith, strength, wisdom, love, and power, imagination, understanding, understanding, will, and order, zeal. I have to sing the song to remember. So zeal was October. We were zealing it yes last week, and then elimination and life. And now you're going to say, "But Ginger, I've been paying attention." And we have not been talking about elim or elimination this morning. We've been talking about release. We've been using this word at least. Well, because we, elimination, that word doesn't, hasn't found favor with us anymore. So it started out as elimination back in the 1930s. Then it kind of moved on to renunciation, and we're going to get back to this word renunciation. And then finally, in the 21st century, we have settled on release. Who knows what it'll be to be in 50 years? So it's probably going to be a better word for what we're talking about today. But we have kind of settled on this word release. So this month we are exploring the power of release. Now, Linda Martella Witsit, and you're gonna say, who is that? Linda Martella Witsit, Divine Audacity. This is kind of my go-to book uh, for all things 12 powers. She talks about that uh, Pa release is the power of cleansing, renunciation, and repentance. And so we look over here at cleansing. Cleansing, the action of release restores our awareness. Awareness is one of my words that I love. Because most of the time when we are experiencing things that we are not enjoying... 
It is because we are not aware of the potential blessings that are around us. We've kind of let the world put blinders on our eyes so we only see the issues that are in front of us, the things that are maybe bringing us down, the things that we're worried about. And so we have to open our eyes and we have to open our spiritual eyes and become aware that we are not separate from God. That we, all we have to do is become aware of the potential of the peace that's within us in any moment. And then we can breathe that in and be present with what's in front of us. So the cleansing action of release restores our awareness of our original and true divine nature. And I just wanted to share a little bit of what Linda Martella Witsit writes. She says, the cleansing action of release is meant to be gentle. I think we talked about this, or someone talked about this. When, you know, like when I was younger, I would use the harsh soap, and you, know, you would scrub and scrub and scrub, and your face would be all red, and it, it wouldn't really help your acne or whatever you were going through. It just made it irritated. But cleansing is meant to be gentle, allowing rather than forceful. It is meant to clear the body and mind, restoring equanimity, restoring balance. Think in terms of melting ice or the softening of muscles or the easing of a strain. Release is gentle. We don't have to force it. We just let it go. So when we are identifying these things that in our lives or in our, our, our if, and things in our lives or maybe thoughts that are in our mind that are no longer serving us, we bless them and release. Because all of these things served a purpose. If I built up a barrier around my heart, it was because I was feeling unsafe at that time. So it was helping me get through whatever situation because I wasn't evolved or I, at that moment I was doing the best I can and I hadn't been exposed to some of the techniques that we use to protect ourselves or, or maybe step into that space where we really don't need protecting. And so it's time to let go of those barriers that we built around us. They were there to serve a purpose, and so we bless them because they did help us in that moment, but we have outgrown them, and now it's time to release. The next part is renunciation. Spiritually, renunciation takes place when we cultivate an open mind and an open heart. Giving up every thought and belief we have clung to and becoming teachable through the activity of spiritual understanding. This is the understanding we talked about earlier in the year. Am I teachable? Ask yourself that. Am I open and willing? Am I teachable? Sometimes many of us as we mature and get a little wisdom of life under our belt, we become maybe a little set in our ways and maybe a little rigid. <laughs> None of you, because I know all of you and you all are way beyond that, but there are some of us, some of us that maybe become a little, well, I know that, you know, I've had experience and my experience says that that is, that's not possible. But what if it is possible? What if uh, maybe my experience didn't quite specifically, you know, correspond with whatever you're experiencing? Who am I to say it's not possible? Anything is possible. So renunciation, what does that word even mean? I had to look it up because I don't, do, does anyone, have you used the word renunciation in this past week? Oh, I don't see any hands out there, but if you have, please email me because I would like to hear it in a sentence. 
But uh, renunciation is the formal, it's a formal rejection of a belief. A for, I don't believe that anymore. I'll write it in writing. <laughs> I don't believe that anymore. It's a renunciation. So how are we feeling about some? Are we ready to renunciate some of these beliefs that we have held on to for so long that are no longer sering us? Charles Fillmore uh, said from the 12 Powers of Man, there must be a renunciation or a letting go of old thoughts before the new can find places in the consciousness. There must be a renunciation of the old thoughts before the new can come in. I, I see Tana out there, and uh, I think Betsy was in that class too, and maybe some of you other were in that class, but years ago, I'm not going to say how many years ago, because that would let you know maybe how old we are. But uh, years ago, we took this class, um, abundance class, and I've already forgotten the name of it. The four T's, the four, yeah, the four T's of abundance. And uh, one of the things that we did was before bed every night for I don't know how many days, we wrote on a piece of paper, I am abundant. I am abundant. And we, I think we wrote it a hundred times. I am abundant. I am abundant. There is a reason why when we were going to school, and I don't know if they do this anymore, but when, when maybe we did something we shouldn't do, we had to like write on the chalkboard a hundred times, I will not throw a spitball at the person in front of me. Because uh, it, in, it ingrains it into you when you write something down. I am, an, I am abundant. I am abundant. And then uh, when you start saying that over and over again, I am abundant, you know what's going to pop into your mind? No, you're not. If you were abundant, blah, 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 and blah would happen. And then you have to go, okay, wow, all this stuff is popping up in my mind. These are the thoughts that I need to release. These are the thoughts that, that are blocking me from experiencing that which, that which I would like to experience. So when you start affirming things, you'll get the clue to what you need to release because talking about renunci renunciation brings us to one of my favorite things, denials and affirmations. My favorite way to say this is I give no power. I give no power because that puts it in I. I give no power to the choices and decisions made entirely from sense consciousness. And what is sense consciousness? This is from our, just our worldly consciousness. It's not our higher self. These are decisions that I made not knowing what a wonderful, beautiful, spiritual being I am. Maybe it was, I'm, I'm very grateful that I never took up smoking. I have enough habits that I am working on that I'm very glad that I don't have to release certain things. Um, so like smoking, my, my father, one of the favorite stories is he likes to tell people how he gave away, gave up smoking cigarettes. And, uh, the way he says it, it sounds so easy. I'm not sure it was that easy, but I will, I will, yes, if that's how it worked, great. But he says, well, I think my mom did it. She said, it was right after I was born. And she said, if you want to smoke, you got to smoke on the patio. <laughs> So she sent him outside. But he says that he just said, Jesus, take these cigarettes from me. And he said he never smoked again. So I'm very grateful that he stopped smoking because we all know that probably my father would not be alive, getting ready to turn 80, if he continued to smoke all these years. There are certain things that we know that are not good for our health. That is a choice that if we stumbled into that, it's because we made it from our sense consciousness. The TV said, oh, smoking's cool. Smoking will make you more attractive. Smoking will help you lose weight. And we bought into that. And now they don't do TV cigarette commercials anymore because they know that that wasn't really true. Uh, so it's very easy to make these decisions with our sense consciousness. So I give no power to these choices that I made when I was unaware. You know, we all make choices. 
I eliminate any limiting belief, idea, thought, or feelings, and attitude. And then I express and experience. I express and I experience wholeness. I, ex I express and I experience abundance because, by golly, cigarettes are expensive. I can't afford to smoke. <laughs> so it's, that's just one of those kind of ideas. Now, if I could give up my Diet Coke habit, you know, that's kind of, they're getting very expensive too. So maybe I need to use this affirmation on myself. Uh, so we all have these habits that we could release. So I give no power. I give no power to this. Repentance. I'm not sure about you, but some people might find the word repentance triggering, especially if you grew up in a fundamental uh, Christian denomination. But repentance means turning away from. There's, there doesn't have to be any baggage with that word. When I repent from something, I go, oh, I made a mistake. And I, I'm going to choose not to make that mistake anymore because that mistake is not helpful to me. Uh, to repent is to change our mind, to return to our awareness of our true nature. If I truly, truly, truly believed the truth principles, I wouldn't do this because I know that it hurts me. And why would I want to hurt myself? when I'm a beloved child of God. So repentance, it just means to change our mind, to turn away from, to stop doing. So you say, Ginger, why do, why do I even want to bother eliminating things? What good does it do for me? Well, Dan sang earlier, is the world a little more peaceful? Are oceans and skies a little more blue? Is humankind a little bit wiser about the good that we can do? Does the sun shine a little brighter where before there was only rain? If so, then I'm glad I came. Have I given hope to the hopeless? Has a hungry soul been fed? Has a child stood a little bit taller because of something I might have said? Have I left a little kindness? Have I eased a little pain? If so, then I'm glad I came. This is the reason why I want to eliminate the things in my life, why I want to release that which does not serve me so that I can be, so that I can express and experience these things that Dan talked about. Bringing encouragement to someone. Being the smile that someone sees. You would be surprised what it, if, if we all just committed to people in this room and at home if we just committed to every time we saw a checkout person at the store and we just smiled and said, thank you, and you just have a great day, like what a change that would be for humanity if we could all just kind of take that moment. This is, this is my gift to the world today that no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm going through, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say thank you and I'm going to appreciate people around me and I'm going to wish them a wonderful day. More than likely, they're going to say, thank you so much, and you have a nice day also. It's going to come back to you. So these are the things that, that pull me, pull me into stepping into that release so I can invite the experience of something new. And so what do we do? We turn within. We always start with turning within because that's where... It all begins. Explore what I want to experience and what I desire. Because it, the world does revolve around you in your own mind. So you might as well decide what you want to experience. Turn within. 
Explore what your desired experience is. And then let those blocks come up. You can't experience that because of this, because of this, because of this. And then you release those blocks to make space. Please say this with me today as we go through this week. Whatever I release will bless me. And now let's say that like we really mean it together. Whatever I release will bless me. As we go uh, along this week, be thinking about those things. Take some steps to release. Next week I'm going to be uh, speaking again, and we're going to explore opening ourselves to invite these new thoughts in to replace the old thoughts that aren't serving us. So as you go through this week, turn within. Identify what it is you want to experience this week. Put it out there in the world and see what comes up. And whatever comes up, those are the blocks. And then release them. Have a blessed week, and I invite Leslie up now to close our service. We now turn to the spiritual practice of generosity. We are grateful for the many ways this center supports us in our spiritual growth. And we, in turn, are happy to support this center with our financial contribution and our voluntary service. We are also grateful for those who have already put in place automatic, weekly, monthly, or quarterly giving. Today, if you feel led to give, visit our website, unityofbloomington.org, and click on the giving link. And if you brought a tithe or love offering with you this morning, we invite you to place it in the singing bowl at the back of the chapel on your way from the service. Our singing bowl is also where you can leave prayer requests. You will find the prayer request card in the pocket of the seat in front of you. Join me now in speaking aloud our abundance affirmation. Together, I am an abundant being, living in an abundant universe. God is the source of my supply. I am not dependent on people or situations for my good. God is the source of my supply. I always have something to give, and I give it consistently. I expect the best, I give my best, and I now attract the best in every experience. our abundance with these words. Together, divine, divine love flowing, flowing through, through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I would like to invite you to stand now and join me in singing 
our closing prayer together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. In gratitude for our radiant health, please remain in place and join us in singing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. 